name's Grandad. Hello everyone. In this week's episode we're going to be building and preparing the shower cubicle ready for the tiles to go on. We cut a hole in the subfloor for the shower waste to fit and sealed the cut foil insulation to the subfloor. Now that's done, we can start work on the seat. We used 2 by one timber for the framework of the uh, step or the seat and um, the carcass was built with 12mm ply. And like usual, I got nominated to varnish the rear face of the boards My lady cut all the insulation boards. That's the two holes drilled out for the hot and cold water pipes that are going to feed the shower mixer. added a little thin strip in there because we decided to move this wall out a bit because we had um, enough room to do it and we thought that little extra space added on to the step area the seat area would make a difference so so we moved everything over they're, they're just the um, supports for a bit of plywood that's and we've got a piece of this sitting on there. They're all cut to a little bit of an angle so there's a fall towards the shower tray. Yes. I know that the boat's not going to be completely, sometimes it's going to be tilted, but about anyway, just for that reason. So that's obviously going to fall this way onto here. So we've marked them to the right height, we need the, the back of the step and then we're going to screw them onto there.
them bits of blocks of wood on there just so that this isn't actually fixed to the floor yet but it will be soon but just so I've got this in the right place for the finish to return for the wall and then uh, this wants to be screwed to there but we can't go too wide because the iron coal pipes obviously run up beyond the back of here so I'm going to put the screws in here and then this will support the the top when we put a piece of cross between there and there and that'll be fired into that bit there so this will all stop all that spragging about yeah first uh, injury of the day top tip don't take one of them off when they're red hot when you just drill it all with it I will blister now. Yeah. Some people um, choose to square the walls off in the shower and use the back side of the shower, if you like, as uh, additional storage space for towels or whatever. But we thought we'd just follow the lines of the, the boat, if you like, up to the gunnels and up to the roof line. And so we've got additional space in the shower. That's the framework complete. Um, we've just got to wait for the plywood to go on a bit later. The tray that we're using comes with this supplied with it, which is a standard sort of sorry, excuse me, shower trap. Which I suppose I could use that and I could put a reducer into there to take me down to three quarter hose for the gulper. But it is wrong, it's really chunky. So anyway, we've gone for a pumped, a pump waste, which hasn't actually got like a trap on it. And all it does is just pump straight out of there to this hose here. So that's going to sit on the shower tray, fastened to the shower tray. Obviously this is above the shower tray and screwed into this. So th thinking is that if we ever have any problems with our shower tray, we can then we can bear in mind this is going to be connected to a piece of plastic hose we can take the top off through the tray itself so unscrew that out of the way and then we can drop this under the floor and what we've done is we've created this little space here and the reason we've got this channel in here because the way that this sits it sits as sod's law would be it's right sort of halfway thickness through the ply so we've had to make this create this channel so anyway i'll be able to drop that below the floor pull on the pipe which is going to be connected to this and that will drag this waste along there under the floor and we're going to have where our sink is going to be situated at the side of the shower inside the shower inside the sink door where the gulp is going to be positioned i'm going to be able to get my arm in there so I can then pull that through, pull that out and get it in my hand here. Do anything I need to do, swap it or change the hose on it or whatever. And then pass that back under there, be able to push on the hose so that this slides this way. And then I'll be able to reach through the, the and pull that back up onto the shower and then screw that down onto it. It's never easy, but it's the only way you can do it, really. So, and that's what we're going to do. And what we've done with the silver foil is, to, so we've just sort of brought it, it's under there, and we've just wrapped it round here to seal it to there. And then we're going to seal it in round here, so they're still creating that seal between the bilge area and the the cabin side of the boat if you like otherwise if we don't do something with that it's going to break that and it's going to be hmm. pointless oh. really doing that we've taken all the ballast out yeah from under the shower um well for all that section anyway um up to there because uh well Wait. take out some weight yeah and also it's easier to manoeuvre everything when we These two we pipes here it. that you've seen before from the shower mixer, they're gonna obviously sit under this seat seating area here. And I'm gonna put the, the fittings, the connections for these 
this sort of area not down here so that if ever again there's any snags or whatever I can get my hand in there and, and deal with that if there's a problem in the future and then this will sit back into there and then we've created this bit of a seat area so that we can so I can sit on it and wash my feet. Wash your feet. <laughs> yeah, amongst other things. <laughs> um, that's going on the front of there. This is good. So, and then that'll be screwed up and then waterproof backable put on there. And then we'll tile over the top. So the, really yeah, good. so the idea is that when you're in the shower, you'll be able to sit here yeah which is quite nice and the shower head is going to be here yeah mix the valve will be there shower there and yeah there's ample space isn't there really yeah. clean your feet it's like a little confession box yeah i've been there <laughs> that. yeah you'll be in there a long time <laughs> eh? <laughs> i'll get out put some insulation boards here as well not needed it's just that we had loads of insulation left so we've decided to um, pull it in all the walls um, and it's just really for soundproofing we don't want to keep any it's not to keep us warm in there is it what? it's not to keep us warm in the shower but no. it makes a huge difference um, if you heard her singing in the shower you'd want it insulated <laughs> Right, let's get on with the backerboard. Oh no, we've just got to wait for the ply to arrive to do this wall. And that bit. Oh, the phone's just ringing. I reckon that's going to be the wood. On the rear of the boards, we marked out the framework of the walls. And here I'm just pilot holding through along those lines so that when we come to fasten the wall onto the framework, we know exactly where to screw to. On the outside of the shower wall we notched out the stud work ready to put some conduit in which is actually going to take the cables for the uh, extractor fan. Just putting some holes down to thread some conduit um, for the gulper pump wires. And they'll go down to this bottom bit because the gulper pump will be in the bottom of the sink cupboard. It's easy, we can get to everything. This is the shower fan we chose. It's a 12 volt fan with a built in LED light, and you get a choice of either chrome or a white fascia for it. We cut the ply out for the ceiling. Then cut the holes for the fan and light. We're using Weddy Backer Board, which is a waterproof board uh, designed to go into obviously wet areas. Um, and it's basically, we're going to fix this on top of the ply, uh, seal it, you'll see that in a, in a bit, but and then we're going to tile over the top of this eventually. We've gone for a thickness board of 6mm, so on top of the 12mm ply, we'll end up with a, an 18mm wall. that way so hopefully it's going to snap off 
Is there a reason why you did it with a saw that way and a standing knife that way? Or is it just... Yeah. Because it's harder to... If I did a standing knife that way and then that way, it might be a bit awkward breaking it. The back of board is really simple to use. It's easy to cut, lightweight, and we've been really impressed with it. While I was waiting for Hayley to finish painting the board for the ceiling, I cut all the boards, um, labelled them, uh, numbered them all, so that uh, we knew exactly where they went when we started to install them. The varnish on the back of the board is now dry, so I can get on with uh, the top coats on the front. And I've used the blue that we used on the wall looks really nice rubbed down, um, there is going to be more coats on it but rubbed down it looked like denim, really nice. I mix, I mix this, this up further, two to one, two parts water to one part of this and then just brushed it onto all the plywood so that it's sealed the plywood and I know we're going to be putting a backer board on top of that which is going to be um, use um, tile adhesive and then screw to the screw to there so the tiles are going to sit on that but it's just a bit of extra security you know you should never ever get any water on it or any damp on it or whatever but you never know do you so you can't see once it's on at least it's a bit more protection isn't it mm. so yeah you just have to just wait for that to dry now and then we can start fitting the back of boards onto there Seal all the edges up and then away we go really. So it's a bonding agent primer. And an add mix so you can add it to your grout or your adhesive as well. Along with the fishing line we also put a bit of uh, spare wire that we had. It's not the wire we're going to use um, but we just used it to thread through the conduit to see how easy it was. Time to waterproof the shower area. We're using a rapid set flexible adhesive for the boards. I haven't measured the exact amounts of water and adhesive. I've just added it to the bucket and mixed it to a consistency that I like to work with. You just trowel it onto the wall Basically the same as if you were going to be tiling it.
Right, this is what we're using with this, the wedding backer board. Um, they're just washers. Um, yeah, basically just a, a kind of washer that you can screw into the board and hold it. You, we've put adhesive behind anyway, but we're going to use these galvanised washers anyway on top of those. That's what they recommend, so we're going to go with that as well. So, yeah, we're going to give it a go. Same on the side. It's just super so get us better. Yeah. It's very dark, I know, but yeah, you just sort of where your three corners meet there. 
Don't have to be exact where our thumb is there. Let's get this caught on the other two feathers. Yeah, so you just bring it back to about here. Put it, push it back into the corner. One goes in that way and then the other one laps over the top. You're good at making beds as well, aren't you? Yeah, good at being in the beds. <laughs> <laughs> I have to rephrase it. <laughs> well, that's all. <laughs> and then I'm just going to get the adhesive that we've stuck. Stuck this on with this the adhesive that we use on the board. Well, now I'm going to go over the top of this. Okay. So that's got an adhesive on it, has it? It's sticky on the back of there, yeah, so it actually yeah. stick to the wall. Yeah. And then obviously when you put your adhesive over it, it goes in between these little squares and then just sticks to this board and then sticks mm. through the top and just over the top. 